Now here, we use the result of integration by parts to further mani manipulate the weak form of the equation, to further manipulate and derive the weak form of the equation. So this integral, if you apply integration by parts, what you get is that you have v times du dx at 0 and 1. OK, so this is the boundary term. And I have the negative minus integration from 0 to 1. Here, uh, dv dx times du dx. OK, and then uh, the remaining term I just uh, uh, keep here v times f times dx. That has to be equal to 0. All right. OK, and uh, here I actually want to get rid of the boundary term. And in order to do that, I'm going to put a little bit restriction on this any v. I'm going to be multiplying any v that satisfy a particularly convenient boundary condition, which is the boundary condition that's the same as that for u, v of 0 equal to v of 1 equal to 0. So if my v satisfy that boundary condition, I can actually remove this boundary term because the boundary, uh, the boundary term is evaluated exactly on the boundaries. So if v is 0 on the boundaries, then I don't have to consider the boundary term. And uh, the whole equation simplifies to the following. OK, so let me just uh, uh, basically simplifies to this equal to 0, and which means integration from 0 to 1, uh, dv dx times du dx is equal to integration from 0 to 1, v f dx. So this is what we call now the weak form. of the differential equation. OK, and uh, if you look at the notes you had on last Wednesday, this is actually exactly the same form we derived by the uh, doing variational calculus to the minimization problem of energy, right? I mean, in, in the in the notes we derived uh, last Wednesday, instead of a v here, we have a delta u. Right, so, so basically, if you replace the v with delta u, which is also arbitrary, right? Basically, delta u is any perturbation you can make to the v, or you can make to the solution u while still satisfying the boundary condition, which enforces the delta u at 0 and 1 are both equal to 0. So essentially, the weak form here is a different notation to the uh, to the form we derived the last Wednesday from a different root from minimizing an energy. So you can derive a weak form like this either through uh, by manipulating the differential equation, basically multiplying a test function v on the equation and integrate, or by uh, the energy minimization form of the equation and uh, through uh, calculus of variation, taking a small perturbation and make sure the energy is the same on the small perturbations. All right. OK, this, I recognize this part is probably the most uh, difficult to understand part of finite elements. It's really the beginning, right? Finite element is, is a, actually a method that, that is uh, quite counterintuitive to get into in the beginning. But uh, once you once you go over this period, uh, you, once you wrap your head around the notion of the weak form and the energy minimization, uh, then everything else becomes quite natural. There are plenty of uh, uh, programs uh, on the open source or, or uh, not open source uh, uh, programs that basically allows you to input the weak form of anything you want to solve, and it solves for you automatically. What does that mean? That means everything after the weak form is actually pretty standard, pretty mechanical. OK, so it's just uh, wrapping your head around the, the idea of weak form actually takes uh, 
uh, take some time. So yeah, if you have any questions, uh, please ask now. I, maybe I can help you wrap your head around the weak form a little bit better. Uh, can you explain how du dx, like the, how does the first term go to zero? Oh yeah, the first term actually goes to zero because I chose my v, I chose my test function. Remember my test function is actually a function I choose, right? So it's actually any function that satisfies this boundary condition. So, so this is uh, when I'm deriving the weak form uh, starting from the differential equation is I, I get the freedom to choose the boundary conditions of the test function. On the other route to derive the weak form, I start with uh, energy minimization. And here in that route, the V or delta U in my last derivation is the perturbation to the solution. And because the solution has boundary conditions, remember U0 equal to U1 equal to zero, right? So any perturbation to the solution, if the perturbed solution satisfies the same boundary condition, then the perturbation has to satisfy U0, uh, has to satisfy delta U0 equal to delta U1 equal to zero, right? So that's, uh, that's where uh, this boundary condition comes from. And this boundary condition ensures that uh, this term, no matter what du dx is at the boundary, it is multiplied by something zero, right? Mm -hmm. So this term goes to zero uh, by the choice of the boundary condition for v.